everyone here and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host, Tom Quee here. Today I'm joined by, you know, an incredible battle rapper, musician, writer, don't flop on beat champion. Press one. Press as a go, man. Good, bro. How you been? I'm well. I mean, I think we, we speak about every year or so. You were like the, f- I think you were the fourth Battle Rap Resume episode. And then we did the sort of build up towards the Bills are stuff. We covered like the innuendo clash and the Bobby clash. And, you know, now we're going to be recapping that. The Bills are one, the Peace Soldier one, all that sort of stuff. There's been so much movement. But a consistent thing in battle rap is Yunnan being flaky. Um, wh- <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 hap- what happened with the Bristol thing? So probably about three, three to four weeks before, I messaged in the group with him and her, and I was like, "To be honest, guys, I don't think I'm going to do this." I sort of, I, I wasn't enthusiastic about a battle. I, I didn't feel excited by it. I weren't inspired, um, to be frank. And then you know, I was like, "No, nah, we've got to do this." And I said as well. I said at the time, I was like, "I, I partially feel like I'm going to riot, and you're not going to even turn up." Mm. He was like, no, I told you from the get-go, um, he was proper on it and promised that he wouldn't wouldn't flake. And then literally, yeah, uh, the Monday, I think the, the, the battle was on the Friday, and I think it was on the Monday or the Sunday, just messaged me some abuse randomly right. and then, yeah, left the group and went, yeah, went off on one. And that was it, really. Started attacking Tony D on Twitter and shit. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, like I, I think, honestly, to be to be completely... Candid, I think he's 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 got problems to be honest. Right. Tom. I think yeah, and I think it's a bit beyond like, battle rap right now. It's Which sad. is a shame. He's, yeah. he's sick. Yeah. He's good. And I was excited to hear him on beat. Um I had some I I had two rounds down and I had a lot of like ideas for the third round, so I was feeling pretty confident at the time. Um and then yeah. I mean, and generally, we touched on this in the past episodes, but generally in terms of your progression as a performer in battle rap, it's safe to say that this on-beat thing, this is your lane. Yeah, 100%. I mean, would you ever go back to acapella? I, I don't think so, no. No. To be frank, um, it's, I, it's, it's part of the same thing, but I think they're two sort of different lanes mm. in within the same thing. And I think, you know, it's best to play to your strengths. At the end of the day, um, I like sort of sharp attacking punchlines that are just sort of relentless. Whereas with the acapella battles, it leaves it so much more open um, to the different sort of angles and trajectories you can take it down. And with that, it's it's a bit more limited on beat. And and to be honest, with my attention span and whatnot, I I kind of prefer that. I kind of prefer the sort of just instant gratification as opposed to the more long during like drawn out things for a punchline that sometimes isn't worth the investment. Yeah, and I, I guess when you're on beat as well, you don't run the risk of Lex coming into your verse and then just choking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an amazing... <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I mean, yeah, yeah avocado <laughs> needs to needs to uh, yeah put a monument to that uh, to that moment. But um, that must be one of the only battles where somebody comes in and, and chokes who wasn't actually involved in the battle. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those rare like like I was just watching the innuendo battle before, and which which I love. I think it's such a good battle, and that has another one of those things where it's like I've never seen someone in an on beat battle like spend a round clowning on the beat as well as he does it. Like you know, it's great. No, he smashed that. Yeah, that was that was yeah, that was an original angle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's un- undeniably funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, it really, it really worked. Um, but uh, let's get to um, let's get to Bilzar then, which was you know massively anticipated clash from both of you. Like you were both really boiling over at this point. Had some um, awesome battles beforehand. Coming down to checkpoint four. Uh, which obviously I was at. And, you know, unfortunately, this sort of post-release of this whole event was a bit hackneyed. I just want to quote from uh, Liam, Liam Bagnall, who posted this tweet shortly around this era, saying, It's sad seeing something me and the guys work so hard on being watered down and used for another man's game. How are you going to release a pay-per-view version because you can't be civil and sort stuff out with someone you fucked over? I mean, I'm not really interested in your take on the whole civil war on Don't Flop, but... Was it annoying not to have a proper on-beat product put out? Yeah, 100%. That was super irritating. Um, yeah, that was really irritating. I'd spoken to Kruger about it. And, you know, he, he actually he said he promised me it was going to be out on a certain date. 
um, I was trying to release it in line with my last EP. Yeah. And that was a sort of rush. That's why I wanted it out. And obviously it went past the date it was supposed to be out as well. Um, yeah, no, it's gutting because obviously the, the sound quality isn't the greatest. Um, you can't see none of the other angle and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and it just so happened that he decided, they decided to have that fallout and my battle was the next one to drop. I guess Soul vs. Shocks and I think Scoop DNA came out normal, unscathed, and then, yeah, this was the first proper thing. And then people who maybe haven't seen the battle for a while or whatever, the sort of pay-per-view is the insignias emblazon, the watermark, you can't really get rid of it. And it doesn't really matter, but, like, especially with an on-beat thing and you want the angles and you want it to be crisp and, you know, you want it to sound great. But I think all in all, though, as a battle, received really well and it's i mean it's such a fun thing to watch back when i was making my notes this morning it... no awesome thank you yeah i, I think so on, i think so on both sides as well like i think at the time i was quite dismissive um yes like when i initially watched it on bills as versus and then when like watching them back um it's, it, yeah i think it's really good on both sides said that you're the rap god well fam i'm not convinced because honestly i don't believe in bills i'm living off the grid i traveled a to b and didn't get no crazy fees lazily complacency stopped me being major league still ill even though there's never been no faith for me so now i kill bill with the blade of tory hands on made for me i vote for him lost when it was dialect on you now the staff will have to watch a rapper dialect in you so when you hear press that's fearless don't fear death turn around i'll make this pussy split like a smear test you were never there don't ever dare yeah i completely agree i mean i remember being there in the room um, uh, at the back and to be honest with you thinking Bill Zoll was going to win and then as as you win I think especially in your third early on it becomes clear that you're going to win you're just getting the more reaction there and I remember sort of thinking oh Bill Zoll, he's doing Peshwari non bars and prearranged like your family you know what I mean I was being such a prude about it I was being so pathetic about it but I agree watching back it's a lot closer than you would think and Bill Zoll's technique his presence it just really comes across yeah definitely he he as an MC, he's like, he's so on point. It's all precision with everything he spits. Um, he just falls short a little bit on some of the stuff he's actually saying, I feel, in regards to, yeah, the angles that he decided to take were a bit sort of weak in that first round. Um, and the fake choke was a bit... Yeah. I was like, oh, that's, just, that's cheap. But overall, yeah, it was still good. It was still really good. Yeah, I mean, the players on a case, like the FIFA cover... Is crazy, mm. uh, and then then it's sort of parlayed into you and your boys at like an Asian Anton deck. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that was about Yamaku. He was pissed about that. Right, 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 right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. For you, there the comes the experience, the professionalism, the final boss on the final boss man. Um, your head is square, like Fred Astaire. And you see this in the P battle as well, and it's kind of very similar because obviously P and Bill's monetary, um, you know, inference there. But you you relish and ring those name flips for all their worth in this battle, and the crowd are just really into it. Yeah, no, definitely. That's the, that's the thing. Like going back to your point earlier, in regards to the name flips and whatnot, I don't think particularly they'd go off as well on an acapella format. Mm. Yeah. Do you know definitely. what I mean? Like, something you can get away with a lot more sort of simplicity, I reckon, as well, like within the punches, as long as you're landing and, and delivering them at the right points with the right sort of enunciation and the right kind of like thing, I think you can make something that's relatively simple pop if it is just delivered correctly. Um, and I think that's definitely the case with some of the bars in that. And what are, what are the conversations between you and Bills or any opponent on these battles when you're deciding the beats? Is that a long sort of back and forth or...? Yeah, with the with the Bills of one, it was long. Yeah. Like, we, yeah, we just did, like, literally must have sent each other about 50 beats Jeez. until we agreed on the beats. Like, yeah, I think the beats are good going back, look like listening to them. I, I like the selection, but, um, yeah, the amount of beats we went through, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, the, um, uh, we obviously we live in the chat. Um, got loads of people listening at the moment. Chat out those. Uh, Man like Dave saying to you, press. What's your favourite beat to go off on? I, I, I do like the one that I use in the Muendo battle. You know, like since that battle, I've listened to that beat a lot. Yeah, that would be one that I'll just fling on that. Uh, the book Books of War mm -hmm. by Rizzo and MF Doom. That that particular beat, just I don't know. I always. I'd say that, to be honest. Yeah. It's just going to draw from the beat. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you say in your second, I don't know if you're just saying it for the sake of it, you say next summer going to rep it in Canada, next summer you'll rep it in Malaga. Was there any truth to that? Were you planning KOTD or...? No, I wasn't, no. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, unless they um, no. I've been speaking to a, a to a to a league in New York though. Right. They do um, on beat battles. Oh, sick. Um, it's called Verbal Warzone. I'm not sort of sure if you checked them out. I haven't. That's the most battle rap league name ever. Verbal, I know, War- it's, it's, <laughs> Verbal it's Warzone. Text battle crew. Yeah. That's um, sick though. But yeah, no, check it out. It's really good, man. The production value is good. They rap with these weird mics that are like sort of like head pieces, you know, like they go around with the mic that connects to it. Um, but it means that the actual, like the, the audio sounds amazing. And um, they put it all out on Spotify as well and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, they've... Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm just looking at some of the thumbnails now. Yeah, Chef Trez has been on there. They've got 59 battles out. Swave Sever's... Yeah, yeah Swave Sever was the first sort of big name they had on there. Um, no, definitely have a look into them. They're really, yeah, yeah, really... yeah, I will. Your bills are some funny stuff here as well. Um, mistake you for Jaws if I was snorkeling, pulling out the fin, and st- <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what were you thinking as the battle was going through? Did you felt that you had won it as it went on, or? Yeah, I feel like he, he his confidence was just progressively sort of like being deflated. Yeah, to be honest, I feel I feel like he he didn't have his usual. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? His usual sort of like. It was a bit different. It was a different build to the one against one four two. It was, yeah. I think part of the problem was in his second on the gravel um, pit beat. He just loses breath somewhat. It's a long sequence. It's technical. It's elegant in parts, but he kind of, yeah, he does get a bit deflated. And I think you just keep getting hits. Really, he marked himself safe on Facebook the day after we met. Uh, you know, real guys. Real guys don't like listening to the old Bill talking about SBTV and stuff like that. Um, uh looks like Chavity G, which is obviously gonna gonna, gonna pop up massively. Now, um, I don't, I, I, I remember you winning, obviously, but I don't really remember how it went down. So, did the judges all go back and you, we were told on stage, or how did it work? We we no, it was like a 10, 15 minute break, hmm. and then we all yeah, and then um. Yeah, that was it. I can't remember the judges. It was like Twisted Pennies. There's a few more. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you I think Unam was one. Um, I think Dialect was one. Uh, and Briggsy as well. Mm-hmm. I do actually remember seeing you after in the crowd. And I'd, I'd never seen a man so high. Honestly, you were completely comatose on your feet. It was quite incredible. Yeah, I was really stoned, man. <laughs> was, it like, um, was it Dank Schrader, I think I heard? It was the bro- yeah, bro. I hadn't smoked weed for like fucking nine months or something, and right. obviously I was pretty happy that I won the battle. I was like, yeah, I'll have a couple of ones on a spliff. And obviously, when you haven't had that in your system for nine months, yeah. absolutely KO'd me. Um, but yeah, that was a laugh. <laughs> and I mean, you know, checkpoint four was ostensibly the last, well, the last big don't flop event we had, sort of like April Fools, mate, April Fools, whatever it was afterwards. So it all sort of came crashing down and lots of storylines in the league were put to a halt i.e. shocks becoming champ and then never went on to defend it and then it took you know whatever how many long 14 months or so for you to defend it was this frustrating for this architecture to collapse just as you had got the title yeah it was yeah of course it was mm-hmm. it was it was super frustrating um but i think i went to bristol to the bristol event the other day and i think what uh is doing right now where it feels like it's a lot more grassroots a lot more back to how it used to be when i first started going to dope flop um there's a lot more casual fans at the events that i've been to uh recently as opposed to sort of the more, the more diehard well the forum guys back like, which obviously is integral to having people there as well but it's good to be sort of reaching out to a different group of people um so with it all, yeah, it was super frustrating to go back to the question, mm-hmm. but I think I think it sort of regained uh, where it's supposed to be going. Um, I think it's going to do well. And, Give it six months. Yeah, and talking of Bristol, uh, your next next battle went down in Bristol. Most people probably haven't seen this. Uh, we covered it with Crafty on his episode a few months ago. Went into the Raptor Clash and the Kid Verbal Clash and all that stuff. So fuck it, acapella all dead on the beat. Bon appetit, cause you're tepid and weak. Carrot top, you got the swag of a vegetable, bruv. I'm levels above. Can't even do it, so you settle with bruv. Fuck it, you should get lost. His yard looks like a pet shop. His real name's Rodney, and it smells like wet dog. 
I mean, you had Battlecrafty before, where I tried out at Don't Flop as well. That was the first time I ever saw you perform. Cool battle, that is. A uh, long time ago. Uh, I remember just, just saying to Craft, that's not how you do it, dickhead! And that getting, like, you know, huge wheel-ups and stuff like that. But that was a, uh, you know, a good throwback. But what was this What was this clash? This, um, the plug, right? It was like some weird tour. Charlie Sloth, like. Yeah, it was his album tour, basically, where he brought all the artists that were on his album. I think kind of like a production album. Mm. Um, so it was like Mike Ratchets, that dickhead. Um, it was, there was a few other people. Notes, I think, was there. Some quite big commercial artists um, doing like a tour. And he had like a, yeah, a battle from embassies from that city in each different city that he had to show. So it was just me and Crafty in that particular one. It was a night after Crafty battled Raptor. Right. Um, so it was a bad weekend for Craft. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, how how was the uh, how was the Crafty battle then? I mean, we don't have to spend too long on it. Yeah, it was a laugh, man. Like it was a quick sort of thing. Um, it, the crowd weren't really expecting that. Or sort of wanted that at that particular time. I don't think it just seemed a bit odd, to be honest. Um, we did it. We had a laugh. Had a beer after. And that was that. Yeah. To be honest, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was just a bit, you know what I mean, lackluster. There's nothing nothing in that that was good. No. I watched, I watched the Zen and Dialect one that they did, and I think it was actually really good. Yeah. But like it actually, actually popped off a lot more, um, whereas that one, it just wasn't the right, I don't know, didn't, didn't feel right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember saying to Craft at the time, he has this, like, really like local Bristol bar that I didn't get about like going down on white ladies and like the hill and stuff and I was you know it was very sort of endemic to that culture and you versus peace soldiers the next battle that I want to talk about one I used to actually rate but all your bars are exactly the same that like, I've been caught since back in the day don't laugh fam you wear a track suit in mate you're not a gangster you're wet soldier nah average at best the only flag that you rep will be draped over your casket when dead You got a gun but when I attack, I an axe will leave your spine attached No fighting back, your punchlines are crap I see P on a card and I'm swiping that Like look at you, they're all cocky Think you're heavy, they're all rockies Think they're G's like, they're all gotties Soldier dead won't wear no poppy This is one people are very excited about For the retaliation card Um, I mean you were always going to be the don't flop on beat champ right This wasn't going to be something that you were going to depart for moral reasons or whatever no, I wouldn't. I wasn't going to depart. No, like I'd, I'd already gone through that tournament to sort of get the title, mm -hmm. so it's like good to defend it a few times at least. And uh, being given peace soldier, was this your first choice? Or because a lot of people were like, "Well, you versus dialect, surely." Yeah, no, dialect wasn't on it. Mm. Um, we spoke to dialect a lot. He, he just wasn't on it. Apparently, he wasn't on battle and then took the tops battle. Which, to be fair, looked pretty sick from everything I've heard and seen so far. Yeah, yeah. The the battle we had the tops, but um, yeah, he, he yeah he wasn't up for it. Um, obviously, yeah, he was my first choice as well. Just in terms of how many on beat battles he has done and whatnot, I don't think he should have had to have gone through the tournament to to have a chance at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dialect has had some on beat, Just... off beat classics. Um, you know, on all formats. This is the first Stone Flop event in fourteen months. Uh, it's went down just recently. They're still releasing the retaliation battles when we when we recorded. I think this is the only no no sorry. Uh, B A and uh, Bonnie's came out as well, so I'm sure there'll be some stuff here. Um, what do you think of the top comment by Danny White? He says, "Peace soldier, always rolling in a whip, and has always been cold from back in day. That's it. Skip his rounds." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I knew exactly he was going to come with that. Yeah, and, and he did come with it. It was a bit frustrating, really, because he he, he should have. I really rate Peace Soldier. Oh yeah, I really think he's fucking awesome. I like his music. His new mixtape's really good. Um, but yeah, the battle I reckon sort of suffers because of that as well. Yes, to be frank, I think overall as a battle, I think it's okay for like a one watch type thing. But I don't think it's, it's, it hasn't got that much rewatch, sort of. You know, and the crowd are not mic'd up, so you can't really hear. It looks a bit dead. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Overall, I think, but um, yeah, that top comment's on point. He is cold, but since back in the day. <laughs> I mean, it is it is a bit dead, which is a bit frustrating. Um, how, how was the whole day? What was the vibe like? I mean, this was Don't Flop's return. Like, did it have that resurgency? Or? Oh, bro, my fucking train was like super delayed. I got there 
and then walked in and did the battle. And apparently they had, they had been a battle for like an hour as well. So, oh right, okay. um, I, I, I didn't catch any of the day to be honest. And you spend a lot of your first with the you know the, the botany tree bars here outstanding in the field kind of idea um like i get i guess p is easy to attack on a visual front yeah well, like well I thought that slender man bar i was just yeah. like yeah <laughs> he just <laughs> that's the imagery i get when i think of p soldier it's like just like a big moving tree Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but i mean you, sick, you, yeah yeah i mean he is sick yeah and that's in your third you talk about from skinny man to slender man which is a bit of a deep I mean, if the diehard press fans, if they know about Pinky X, they're fucking OGs, like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, see see earlier Battle Rock Resumes where we discuss, uh, you know, press and Skinny Man and stuff like that. But yeah, I love that Slenderman bar. Loads of great P-flips. P's old news now. We're on to cryptocurrency. Yeah, that uh, is hard. Mm. <laughs> fucking, fucking love that and it's just you feel a collective eye roll you know everyone sort of sighing online when p sort of goes into his hardest spitter mode in the second and it's just like come on man original material that's it like I, them bars are really good mm. like, just we've all heard we've all heard them you know um they're not particularly about me they're kind of generic in that respect where they do sort of fit over any beat yeah um but yeah not for a battle man yeah 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 um and three 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 twenty fours as well it weren't it weren't that many bars yeah um so yeah i mean uh i mean yeah. and a day if need be mm, yeah i've been a prick for your whole life are you saying uh pinhead yeah and you know the judging was pretty unanimous um respect ba gave it to you in g dash's opinion it wasn't even close uh, Theo psychosis like the orangutan bar that P did, but he says that he's heard some of the stuff before. Canel clearly very Canelish in his ways. Uh, loves P. But had you, had you winning? Um, Mickey giving it two one to P. Yes, yeah. I mean, Don't know about that. But, a, bit, um, a bit surprising, but yeah, fair enough, isn't it? But I don't know. He, he explained it to me afterwards. He was just like, he thought some of my material was quite generic. Which is fair to say, <laughs> to come and to say it to me afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so bless, okay. At least you've given me your reason for it. Cheers, mate. Um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. Um, I, I, th- I think I won. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that. Yeah. Um, it just definitely need to, like, the, the, the next sort of title defense just needs to be a bit bigger. Yeah, so I mean, you know, what are we looking at then, 2019? I mean, obviously, considering you do defend it and move on, like um, to further defenses, like would you be looking to battle what twice, three times, or probably like two to three times in twenty nineteen? And then, to be honest, man, probably like if if I defend the title again and win it, maybe one more time or two more times, I'll probably just um, sort of give it up. To be honest, I mean, I want to see you versus Twisted. That's yeah. I think he's, he's living in America now. Oh, is he? I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, we just we dropped a tune as well mm. um, about a month, month and a half ago. Um, so on his latest project, nice man. Yeah. But, um, no, so that probably won't happen to be honest, realistically. But um, natural, that was supposed to happen. I think that'd be really good. But he's yeah. kind of he, he pulled out as well and stepped away. Uh-huh. Um, and when that whole Ramsey shit went down, yeah, I heard, yeah. Um, which was yeah, that was that was fucking crazy. At least it gave us a lot of bars. If there's one upside to that uh, horrible, horrible mode, um, I invited everyone on the Twitter to give us some questions as well at Battle Rap Resume. Um, most of them we sort of covered. One of them we haven't from Er uh, saying, "How does Press feel about him versus Dialect on the big stage in 2019?" Yeah, that's the one though. Really, mm-hmm. Dialect is the only one that still makes sense going forward. Um, if he accepts is another is another thing, but yeah, that's the one it really should be. To be honest, Tom, <sighs> that's the dream one. That he's got his own league and stuff now. I think that's right. He does. Yeah, I've seen him promoting something called Talk Is Cheap. I think yeah. he's doing that with Westy, which sounds like it'll be sick. If he's on it, I'm on it. There's been talk of Lefty as well, which, to be honest, either or I prefer dialect. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, and uh, last time we spoke. 
we were talking about your music and you were saying that you'd sort of prepped a, a follow-up release when you moved to Bristol, if I remember correctly, which was uh, the Super MC EP. So mu- musically, what's happening going forward then? When's the next release? Uh, so it should be early next year. Um, and I've got an EP called Priscilla um, coming out with my friend called Silla B. Hmm. Um, he's an MC I'm working for um, with <laughs> from Bristol. Um, and we're dropping a sort of collab EP that we've been working on. Um, should be coming out on vinyl as well. So how how was that change for you then, moving from London to Bristol and getting into a whole new scene? And, you know, what is the scene out there like for the sort of music you like to make? Yeah, it's really good. Um, probably better in Lon- like, than London mm-hmm. in a lot, a lot of respects. Um, people seem to be a lot more sort of collaborative, a lot more up for... Uh, p- people like to listen to a lot more rap here. Yeah, um, and the nights are a lot more accessible and a lot more frequent. Um, as opposed to London, it's not that. It's a different sort of facet of UK hip hop. Um, it's more like with grime as well. You know what I mean? These, these events are a lot more frequent as opposed to what that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it just sort of yeah opens it up. It's a big student city. So there's always a lot of students, a lot of people up for going to events. So yeah, the scene's healthy. There's a lot of sick artists as well. And you performed at something called Mom Spaghetti recently. What is that? <laughs> That's a sick hip hop night. Yeah. Um, it's just started. I think that was their fourth, third or fourth night. Mm. Um, it's run by a girl called Amy Mutz, uh, Scottish chick. And she's um yeah that's that's what she's called the night mom spaghetti brilliant I was like yeah yeah it's she asked, asked me to play I was like have to play at yeah. mom spaghetti it was the <laughs> night before don't flop oh right and I always see you repping uh, VRBL what what is that uh, that's a record label and collective for sort of left field hip hop um, it's run by my friend Alex Rodriguez um, my other friend Syllabies in it Fabian Darcy Gabriel Waves. Young Toro, um, just a group of MCs and producers. And how do people, um, you know, get at you and, and find the music? Search Press One on YouTube, Spotify, um, and at Press Uno on Instagram, Facebook, everything. And as I say, we are live at the moment, so if you've got any questions for Press, just as we wrap up, we'll go through. I'm just going to go back through the chat. Uh, Joe asking Press, uh, who's your favourite hip hop act? Raw, oh, that's a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Joe. Joe, yeah. I don't know, Joe, man. That's so hard. Oh, who, so who, who have you been enjoying lately? Who have you really been vibing off in 2018? To be honest, I haven't been listening to, I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Do you know about Unknown T? I don't. There's an artist from London called Unknown T. He just dropped a tune called Homer and B. I've just been playing that on loop quite a lot. Okay. Um, other than that, not really, man. All right, Unknown, of... unknown T. Okay, okay. We'll put Unknown T out there into the universe. Definitely check that guy out. Uh, e for UK asking another impossible it's question. It's probably quite sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, e, e for UK asking, uh, who's Press One's favourite producer? Uh, another impossible question. Probably Primo. Yeah. When I think about it, it will change every 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 couple of months or so. But every time I go back and think about it, it's probably just Primo. Yeah, it's uh, just I mean, classic yeah. after class. It's a signature sound. Yeah, it really. Is. No one yet has really imitated that. How he does it. Dave asking for you. Who do you see as your closest rival on beat clash wise? Like, who do you see bringing something to you that would excite you? Is that is that like a dialect? I guess. Yeah, definitely dial. Yeah. Who well, I think lost that battle recently, you know, as well with Ark. Oh, Ark! I saw you tweet about that. Ark definitely won. It's bullshit. He did win, right? Yeah, yeah, he definitely he won. He won. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. Didn't. That win. was bullshit. That that was yeah. That was bollocks. Like. Yeah. Oh, it killed him. There were so many bars in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Tire die, that tire die bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was... Peace and love. Blah, blah, blah. All these, there, was so, there was loads that just got overlooked. Yeah. 
And I think Ark's just sort of stalled on him. And I saw Ark tweeting about it as well, being a little salty about structure and how that's... Ne- he's, I've, been, I've been battling for 13 years. What the hell does structure mean? And yeah, I just... I don't know. You can have your little scorecards and your little variables and stuff, but my heart just felt that Ark won. I just enjoyed his stuff more. He just clowned on him in every yeah. way. Yeah. And some, But with, with bars as well. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like continuous clowning and... and Dyer had some sick stuff that that stick your nose in like an inquisitive bird. That was amazing. Yeah, that far. But the double O shit was a good angle, but it didn't it didn't connect. Mm, no, no. Um, and uh, a purple Harlem asking, would you still battle dialect, but on another league, not on don't flop? Yeah, I guess so kind of ruins the title match aspect it, it makes, yeah it makes sense to be on don't flop though mm-hmm. when you think about it it kind of has to be on don't flop now it does it does yeah it looks like uh <laughs> i'm just going through the chat it looks like crafty popped in the chat quickly just as just as i was slagging him off so uh yeah anyway we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get craft on the channel uh we're gonna do an episode tomorrow um ryan asking would you ever take koj on beat Yeah, that'd be good. I think Koji was actually quite good against Innuendo when they had that battle on beat that was overall a shambles, but I think he showed a lot of promise. And he's uh, good, isn't he? When he wants to yeah. he's another weird like Yunnan guy. Not to that not to that degree, but you know no. what I mean? Like it all just shows up when he fucking wants to show up. But when he does, it's fucking it's good. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Um, and let's have a look here. Who else is there? Uh, Shellen Stardot asking, Press, where is my verse? Do, do you owe this guy a verse? Or? <laughs> I don't even know who that is, you know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm sure he can. Uh, I'm sure he can get in contact with you. Yeah, but um, but yeah, this has been uh, this has been great, man. And again, I want to push people into the direction of Press's music and everything he's doing. We'll put the links in the description down below. I'll also link to our other episodes. We've pretty much gone through all the battles in the back catalog i'm looking forward to all the stuff coming up oh sorry one more question from uh martin rogers saying shout out to press as well liking my instagram posts and my tunes um did you listen to his song dracaris a control remix you liked it on instagram apparently when did i i mean I, yeah yeah i mean it's hard to hard to remember exactly when these things are but um yeah <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe not but still uh we'll put the links down below everyone can go check those out as well press thank you again man this has been great yeah no safe Tom. thanks for having me mate